You know we're all about red meat here at Healthcare Triage, or at least we don't think it's bad for you to consume, and we've held our ground on that hill for a while now. There is, however, one major exception, and that's the topic of this week's Healthcare Triage. Red meat allergy. It all has to do with the sugar molecule that is a really long name. We'll just call it by its nickname, Alpha-Gal. And while that sounds like a cool Reddit username, it's actually known to be responsible for a potentially severe allergic reaction to red meat. This molecule is present in other mammals, like cows, pigs, and dogs, but it isn't present in humans. So when it's introduced to humans in certain circumstances, the immune system may be primed to respond strongly when it encounters it again in things like red meat. This can happen with other animal-derived products as well, including dairy, products containing gelatin, or even certain medications or vaccines. Someone with the allergy will generally experience anywhere from mild to severe symptoms between two and six hours after exposure to red meat. There are many potential symptoms, including rash, hives, nausea or vomiting, severe stomach pain, and even anaphylaxis. But who's this happening to and why? While the evidence isn't 100% clear, tick bites are strongly implicated in the development of the allergy. In the United States, it looks like Lone Star or black-legged ticks are the main culprits, but other tick species have been implicated in other countries, including Europe, Asia, and Australia. This is bad news for people who love both red meat and outdoor activities. It's also a public relations disaster for ticks, who already have a terrible reputation as disease-spreading parasites, thanks to their relentless spread of Lyme disease and Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and thanks to their unapologetic taste for blood. The tricky thing about alpha-gal is that not everyone bitten by these types of ticks ends up with the allergy, even those with the specific immune markers known to underlie the allergy. And we aren't sure how the tick bites are causing the allergy in the people who do get it. The little we do know about what makes people vulnerable to the allergy suggests the involvement of genetic factors like blood group and possible variations in the microbiome, though microbiome research is still in its infancy. As for research that's tried to figure out how tick bites cause the allergy, researchers have found alpha-gal in tick salivary glands, saliva, and midguts. Some evidence suggests that the presence of alpha-gal can be blamed on the tick's previous blood meals, while other evidence suggests that it originates from the tick itself. One expert has postulated that there may be something else in tick saliva that ends up causing the allergy in humans. And why do we only see an association with specific tick species? We don't have an answer to that yet either. This meat allergy was only first reported about a decade ago, which isn't very long in research years. So things are poorly understood right now because, as one paper put it, the tick-host interface is a complex battleground. Though the allergy is permanent for many, some people have experienced a remission, though receiving more tick bites has been associated with a return of the allergy. For those without remission, the only treatment is to avoid red meat, sometimes lots of other products, if the allergy is severe enough. For now, the best advice we can give is to avoid that tick-host battleground when possible. When you can't, treat your clothing and other items with tick repellent. Do a thorough check for ticks when you're done, and immediately remove any that you find. We all know that's very annoying, but remember the ticks are sneaky, and they have a lot in common with the Predator from the 1980s action movie, Predator. They have little sensory pits on their forelegs that they use to detect things like carbon dioxide. Yeah, they know we're there because they can smell our breathing. They can also sense infrared light, like our body heat. And once they manage to locate and bite us, they secrete molecules to inhibit pain and itch so that they can feed upon us for longer without detection. I think we can all agree ticks are pretty terrible, and this red meat allergy makes the whole thing worse. I don't know about you, but I was keen to avoid all things like blood meal even before I knew about the red meat allergy. Good luck out there. Hey, did you enjoy this episode? You might enjoy this previous episode on Does Sugar Feed Cancer? We'd appreciate it if you'd like this video and subscribe down below. Consider going to patreon.com slash healthcare triage where you can help make the show bigger and better. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Edward Lillehome, and Brian Nam, and of course, our surgeon Amaral Sam.